What causes the heart to beat? Well, the heart can beat on its own. If you took your heart out of your body now and put it in a jar and put some fluid around it, it could beat on its own for quite a few hours. It does that because there are a set of cells called the sinoatrial node that automatically fire electrical potentials and then spread those throughout the heart to the other cells and those electrical potentials make the heart muscle contract and therefore beat. So what exactly controls the heart rate? So in that heart of yours that's sitting in the dish and the bench at the minute, that might beat at about 100 beats per minute. That's controlled by the electrical activity in the sinoatrial node cells. Those fire what's called action potentials at a regular rate. They have their own intrinsic electrical activity. But in the body, your heart rate is considerably lower. It's probably more like 60 to 70 beats per minute for a healthy person. And that's for many reasons, but a main reason is that the nervous system is involved in controlling the heart as well. There are a particular branch of the nervous system called the autonomic nervous system that deals with all the things in the body that happen that you don't need to think about. Uh, digesting your lunch at the minute or monitoring blood gases and controlling heart rate matching it to your body's requirements so is the brain the primary organ of the nervous system well the brain is only one part of the nervous system and uh, with people we tend to forget about it because there's also the spinal cord which obviously travels down you can your back underneath your spine and then there are a whole bunch of nerves that come out from the brain and the spinal cord into the periphery, the rest of your body. All of your body has nervous innervation. And in your gut, so that's your gastrointestinal tract, there's yet another little mini brain called the enteric nervous system that deals locally with food and reflexes that help you digest your food. How do nerves actually work? Well, nerves work by a combination of electricity and chemistry. A single nerve cell has a membrane surrounding its nucleus. In the membrane there are channels, so pores or holes in the membrane, which let ions move through. And by allowing some ions to move through at different times, then fires what's called an action potential, a rapid change in the cell's excitability. And that's because of movement of selective ions. So that's the electrical part. Now that action potential that then can pass from the cell body of a neuron or a nerve cell down what's called this axon that takes signals down to other cells until it gets to a terminal. And when it gets to the terminal, there's a space between that terminal and another cell. And electricity is not very good at crossing gaps in spaces so to cross the space the cell releases chemicals the chemicals are called neurotransmitters and they diffuse from the first cell across the gap known as a synaptic cleft where the second cell the receiving cell has special proteins that can detect those neurotransmitters and set up its own electrical activity so a lot of nervous behaviours determine on electricity. Is this the reason electricity is so dangerous to the body? Well, many reasons why electricity is so dangerous to the body. But if you shock your brain too much, then you will depolarise what's called depolarization block of your cells. If your cells don't fire, then your brain doesn't work. And if your brain doesn't work, then you don't breathe. And breathing is fairly important for life. <laughs> Yes, I should think, think so. Um, electricity travels pretty fast. It travels at the speed of light. So why do humans have delayed reactions? Well, if you imagine you can react fairly quickly, you imagine you stand on a nail on bare feet. You lift your foot fairly sharply away from that because you feel the pain quickly, which is quite a handy reflex to have. But to get from the pin hitting your foot to fill in your muscles away, you have to take the signal from your foot 
up what's called a sensory nerve so first of all there's a receptor in the foot of the nerve ending that has to change that signal that stimulus to a signal an electrical signal it would then pass up the nerves in your foot into the spinal cord and then in the spinal cord some of the signals would go up to your brain to say ow that hurts but at the same time you would have signals that go to the other nerve cells that make your muscles move to say this is something painful move my foot away from it so you have that processing time that needs to take place you mentioned electricity and chemistry in understanding nerves is neuroscience more an interdisciplinary science or should it be geared towards research in the biological sciences oh i think uh, like many sciences today it's much more interdisciplinary than perhaps we might imagine for neuroscience research here at Leeds we have engineers uh, psychologists neuroscientists such as myself we have people who study neuroscience and worms as models for human diseases and on flies to try and model human diseases and of course we have people practicing medicine using knowledge from neuroscience as well so yes it's very interdisciplinary the heart is a muscle and it's made of the same tissue as other muscles so does it function in the same way as other muscles in the nervous system or is it slightly special i think the heart is a slightly special muscle because as you know your heart beats about once a second roughly so, and most of your other muscles don't move until you tell them to or until some signal tells them to so the special thing about the heart is that it can beat automatically what is an ECG and what does it tell us an ECG is a way of monitoring the heart from outside the body it's an electrocardiogram you put electrodes on your chest and you can detect the small electrical changes through the chest that happen through the heart as the heart beats is it possible to consciously control your own heart rate or is it an entirely subconscious mechanism well there are some people that can in fact control their own heart rate for most of us it's not the case and most of us don't sense our own heart rate but there are people who do are very aware of their own heartbeat and there are people who can control it so i think it's something that you may be able to learn but i've never investigated it much myself why do people claim to have an increased heart rate when feeling in love oh i think that might be because you need blood supply to uh, uh, special organs at those particular times <laughs> so we've talked a bit about love but can sudden frights lead to heart attacks and significant heart changes well interestingly earlier i told you that the heart is controlled by the autonomic nervous system there are two branches to the autonomic nervous system a parasympathetic branch which is the branch that keeps your heart rate lower than it would work automatically so we call that a break on the heart and then there's a sympathetic branch which it's always working but it's particularly predominant in times of fight or flight so people recall it to the fight flight or fright branch of the autonomic nervous system and when that's stimulated that increases heart rate and i guess if you had perhaps a blocked coronary artery or a nearly blocked coronary artery and you put extra demands on the heart during such times then you could put it under extra stress perhaps leading to a myocardial infarction so is it healthier for us to have a higher or a lower heart rate oh it's generally thought a lower heart rate the better but i think some recent research suggests that very low heart rates as um, perhaps with extreme athletes is not so good in the longer term for those athletes so i think a reasonably low heart rate maybe 60 to 70 is a resting level seems okay to me what are the key methods employed to resolve common heart problems it depends what kind of common heart problems you mean so if you have what's called atrial fibrillation that means the top of your heart the atria which 
fill with blood then have a beat and then enter into the ventricles which pump it around the body if those beat out of synchrony and beat too much then you don't fill your ventricles properly and if you have that and some people cure it by ablating where the parasympathetic nerve endings enter into the heart and that sometimes and sympathetic nerve endings that sometimes seems to resolve the fibrillation is blood pressure related to the nervous system well the sympathetic branch of the nervous system that supplies what's called your vascular tone so as you're sitting there your blood vessels are a little bit constricted and if you switched off the sympathetic nervous system they would predominantly relax at least in the periphery that, that supplies a vascular tone and therefore your sympathetic nervous system is critically involved in this what are the best steps we can take to keep our heart as healthy as possible well I, I don't think it's any secret is first of all don't eat a typical Scottish diet eat healthily <laughs> um, eat a good proportion of your diet is fresh fruit and veg and not processed food and uh, do some exercise uh, probably a, a good few sessions a week.